This is Worship Embassy Family Church. <clears throat> Welcome to church. This is Worship Embassy Family Church. Uh, standing in front of you, it's Nogwa Zimzimanze. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Welcome to church. And let us take the time to apologize for the late service circumstances beyond our control. Um, so it fits that we can only come at this time. So I'm going to take this time before we pray to acknowledge my husband, Apostle TV Zimanze, acknowledge my children, acknowledge our leaders at Worship Embassy Family Church, and uh, acknowledge the rest of the disciples of our church, acknowledge servants of God from different platforms, different areas that would come across this message. And so without waste of time, let's get into our intercession. I'm really going to just request you to stay with me on this message. Um, it's a message that is much needed and I believe it will answer some questions that you have as a child of God. And once again, um, stay with me in this message. It's a message once again that will answer a lot of questions that you might have. Why am I going through so many difficult things as a child of God. If we are called as children of promise, why then are we going through so much hardships and sufferings as children of God? What is God's plan? Yeah, what is God's plan? What is God's plan? Why does he allow hardship and suffering for us as his children? Mm, as whom he purchased with the highest price that cannot be matched. Hallelujah. Welcome to church. Welcome to church. Let us take this time and pray. Father, we adore you. We thank you. We reverence your name at this time. We worship you, King of Kings. We worship you, King of Glory. We bow at the throne of your grace. Father, take over and take control. We come before you, God, Emmanuel. I am that I am. We come before you, establish of our faith. We come before you, our creator, everlasting, from everlasting, everlasting to everlasting. God who is uncreated, but created everything. We salute you, Siti Bayete, at this time. Age kolofana nawe soze abakona, loyo fana nawe. You remain enthroned in our hearts. You remain enthroned in our homes, in our marriages. You remain enthroned in this church. We thank you, God, for this platform. We thank you for your word. We thank you for the company of your angels. We thank you for the partnership of the Holy Spirit. We thank you for the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus. Thank you for seasoning us with your word. Your word that forever cleanses us. Your word that forever removes every scale that is in our eyes. Father, we thank you that, that out of every brokenness, you are forming a master mosaic for your glory. That every brokenness carries your purpose. That every hardship, every suffering, it carries your purpose. 
in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Father, we reverence your name at this time. We shall forever reverence your name in the name of Jesus. Hmm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. Father, use my utterance for your purpose at this time. Reveal, mighty God, somebody's season at this time. Through today's message, through today's message, Father, reveal your purpose and the tools that somebody can use to remain in an intimate relationship with you. Father, we thank you. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Father, we thank you. We thank you. Maka tapalu saya labakula hale. Mando koro shalabri kandasi ya labahita kalabashulu. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. It is out of the loins of the broken, hallelujah, that you release your fire. Ah, hallelujah. It is out of the loins of the broken that you release your fire oh god mm. to begin a new thing in their lives in the name of jesus hallelujah you give power to the feeble knees you give support to the tired hands you are god you are god all by yourself in the name of jesus hallelujah father we thank you for your fire we thank you for your fire that allows no standard of man to breathe in our hearts. In the mighty name of Jesus, we worship you, oh God. Remain a, a lamp unto our feet in the name of Jesus, so that we can see closer, remain a light unto our path, so that we can be able, oh God, to even see afar in the name of Jesus, hallelujah. Let both keep us moving in the name of Jesus, hallelujah. Family, let us begin with our message. South Africa is under a stage two of load shedding. And I believe if you meet up with this stream at any time you're going to meet up with, uh, with it, it will still bless you, hallelujah. This is our Wednesday service. Today's teaching, why God allows suffering and hardship seasons in the lives of believers. So before we can go any further with this message, I want us to look um, at some circumstances or rather uh, uh, put a foundation into our message as to what are sufferings, uh, what are hardships, you know. Um, these are seasons of testing. We all go through seasons of testing. We all go through these seasons where you feel like, I cannot take it anymore. We all have been there. Where you feel that your faith is suffocating, your faith is weak, you feel that you are defeated you feel that you know what it is enough let me just die um a couple of people in the bible they cried out to god because they couldn't take anymore the hardships that they were facing and so one of the the characteristics of hardships is that they paralyze someone's faith uh, however, before they get to paralyze your faith, they first deal with your identity. Hardships and sufferings 
will definitely affect your identity as a child of God. And I believe somebody is writing because really um, we, we, we are just in a season as children of God. And I believe this message is relevant. And so let's go back. Let's go back. What are hardships? Hardships are these severe testings that come from God. And I want you to note something that God will not allow certain seasons to come into your life without him authorizing them to happen. Everything that is happening in our lives, it does not catch God by surprise. And I often say that if you remain in prayer, if you remain intimate with God, if you remain in fellowship with God, the events and the patterns of your life will not surprise you as well because if you carry his dna if god is not surprised why should you be surprised if you are surprised if you are shocked it just says one thing it is a sign that you are not devoted in your altar of prayer when you are surprised by the occurrences of your life it just means that you are not applying the principles of god's word in your life and so some things when they happen they catch you unaware but why am i emphasizing that you will not be caught off guard you will not be surprised if you are in a place of prayer it's because in jeremiah verse 33 the lord says call upon me and i will answer it it, it is a scripture that carries so much of an assignment from god and it carries a promise call unto me and i will answer and then he takes it further he says and i will show you great and mighty things to come Meaning when you devote your life in prayer, the Lord will definitely not just answer, but he will show you great and mighty things, issues of and the future events that will happen in your life. Either you prepare for them or you organize yourself in a different strategy so that when they land, you are well prepared. So hardships in most cases, when they come it is not that god has not shown us it's just that when he showed us these hardships these sufferings that will come often the time we always say god i am not prepared so what then happens when we tell god we are not prepared it does not stop the plan of god our unpreparedness does not stop the plan of God. That's what he said um, in the book of Job. That is Job speaking these words in Job 38. He says the purposes of God shall never be thwarted. Meaning that which God has planned, it will happen. Whether you are prepared or you are not prepared. Whether you have had him or you have not had him. He says once God spoke and twice I had him. It is still Job. It is Job who went through the most. It is Job who went through stages of sufferings. He said once he spoke, twice I had him. It means God's voice when he announces the events of our lives, when he announces the future, there will be an echo so that you do not miss his instructions hallelujah mm. the, the the voice of god carries so much sound and presence you cannot miss it you can rather just be rebellious and say i am not prepared i know believers who are saying i am not cut for patience I am not cut for long suffering. I am not cut for that. But I will remind you as a child of God that the fruits of the spirit 
are not given to us as a buffet. They are given to us as a complete component that every believer must have them. These nine fruits of the Spirit, they determine your growth as a child of God. They determine your direction as a child of God. So if you want to do a pick and choose, that just says how much of your growth you are prepared to take. And I will tell you this while we are just in this introductory stage of our message, that that which you skip, you will meet in the future. That process that you are skipping, you will definitely miss in the future. How do I know this? The purposes of God shall never be thwarted. The purposes of God cannot be done away with. Hallelujah. Now, hardships, when we look across the Bible, they've toppled great men and women of God out of position, out of their destinies, because patience and long-suffering was under test, and they just couldn't do it. So when hardships come, they will test various areas of our lives. They will come to test how firm and how built are you in your marriage vows as a husband and a wife. They will come and test how firm and how built you are as a family. They will come and test how firm is your strategy in business. How firm is your strategy? How firm is your vision for your ministry? How firm is your understanding and your revelation of God? When hardships knock, they are coming to test your faith. They are coming to test certain areas of your life. Apostles said something so important when we were diagnosing pre-COVID, in COVID, and post-COVID. He said something so profound. He said the believers that went into COVID, they were not, only, they were not tested in COVID, but they were tested based on what they knew when COVID started, when COVID hit. He said those that came victorious on the other side was as a result of having a greater faith prior to COVID coming. They were prepared. And so most of us, we refuse to be prepared. And when circumstances of life, when hardships and suffering come, we surrender quickly and we say, God, I do not want this. People kill themselves before, because of hardships. They don't understand the mind of God. Why must they go through what they must go through? People, when they go through hardships and sufferings, they divert, they go and look for help somewhere else. They look for help in Sangomas. They look for help from all sorts of options that you can think of. They move away from God because they think, I cannot take this anymore. And so they look for plan B. But I want to encourage you, child of God, when you are a child of God, when you are born again, there is no plan B when you come to God. It is God and nothing else. The testing of our faith is much needed. The word of God says, I counted all joy. When I go through sufferings, I count it all joy. Hallelujah. There, 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 there is a message in that season that you could be going through. There is a purpose in that season that you could be go, going through. Yours, it is to search for the mind of God. And as you search for the mind of God, you will realize that he did reveal 
the season that you are currently going through. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, when we look at great servants of God in the Bible, in the book of Genesis 16 verse 2, we see Sarah surrendering and saying, I, I cannot do this anymore. We see Sarah approaching her husband and saying, look, because I can't bear you a child, you rather go and sleep with our female servant. And she suggests her guy to Abraham. That is a great example of somebody that just wanted to help God. I want to remind you, the season of your suffering, God has allowed it. And he will not allow you to help him. That which he has said, that which he has purposed, he will make sure that it comes to pass. It is not about your age. It is not about your carnal mind. That which God has said over your life, it shall surely come to pass. That which he has promised, God will deliver on his weight. He has never said anything and he does not perform his weight. The word of God says that he observes to perform his weight. God is faithful unto everything that he has declared. So the season of suffering carries a greater purpose than what you are feeling. And God will not allow that your destiny be aborted or that you die while waiting for the promise. No, 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 no. People of great visions, people that are given much faith, people that are given great promises, they do not die before they are time. And so you will not die until you see deliverance in your family until you see deliverance in your marriage until you see deliverance in your finances until the lord performs his weight you will not die but you will leave you will leave to testify of the goodness of the lord upon the land of the living you will not testify in your grave but you will testify in the land of the living God has promised you a child. He declared it when he created men and women. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He declared that the fruit of your womb shall indeed come forth in the name of Jesus. So understand the season that you are in. Do not abort the plans and the purposes of God upon your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When Daniel was faced up with an adversary, he didn't just plunge into that adversary, but the word of God declares that he went into an upper room. When he got into the upper room, he opened the windows. Hallelujah. He didn't play small. He didn't just go inferior. He didn't just become average, but he just went big. Hallelujah. He went into the upper room and he opened the windows and he started to call on the name of his father. When we go through sufferings and hardships, God is calling us into a deeper relationship with him. There is purpose in every season of our lives. And the greater purpose of it all is that God is calling for intimacy. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. What did Abraham do? Hallelujah, hallelujah. What did Abraham do? The book of Romans 4, hallelujah. The word of the Lord says, Abraham hoped beyond hope. I don't know what is that. I don't know what is that. The word of God says he hoped beyond hope. Hey, he was at the end of himself. He could see his wife that he had entered menopause and yet the promise had not been fulfilled. And so the word of the Lord declares that Abraham hoped beyond hope. He used the last part of himself to wait upon the Lord. And the word declares that he hoped beyond hope. He hoped against hope. That the Lord who has spoken, 
he will fulfill that which he has said. I don't know what God has said to you. I don't know what God has promised you. But just like Abraham, just like Abraham, just like Daniel, hallelujah, hallelujah, understand the times, understand why God has allowed that season of affliction, why God has allowed that season of hardship, why God has allowed that season of suffering upon your life. Hallelujah. Oh God. Paul himself, he is praying, Father, this stone, this stone that is on my side, this stone that is on my side, would you have mercy and just remove it? Hannah cries to God. At first, he never understood the strategy. At first, he did not understand the purpose. But at a later stage, Hannah changed completely when she understood the hardship, when she understood why God had allowed the hardship. The prayer changed. God will place a penina in your life. God will allow the enemy to bring a penina in your life because there is a purpose that God cannot do away. There is a purpose that cannot be removed. There is a purpose that you cannot do away with yourself as a believer. You need it for the training up of your faith. And so penina will be allowed that he tortures you. Penina will be allowed. Butakbali sele. He will tell you, no, I do not want with my children today. Go and have your own child. It is not that God has not said it, that upon a womb of a woman shall come forth a child. But the enemy is against that which the Lord has said. And because God has a purpose about the affliction, about the suffering, and about your hardship, he allows the enemy for his name to be glorified. And so we see Hannah changing the strategy. She stopped complaining to her husband, but she took it upon herself and she said, God, I understand where you are taking me. The prayer changed completely. It was no longer a prayer of words. It was a prayer of groanings. It was a prayer of travailing in the spirit. When you have prayed so much about your hardship, when you have prayed so much about your suffering, the word of the Lord in Romans 6, Verse 26, hallelujah. It declares, my apologies, Romans 8, verse 26. Romans 8, verse 26. It declares, for we no longer know what to pray for. You get to that point. When your hardship is, is too much, when you have prayed for six months for the same thing, when you have prayed for almost a year for the same thing, when you have prayed year in, year out, you have declared, you have seeded, you have given your sheaves, you have been faithful in serving in the house of the Lord. You are doing everything you best know to remove the cup that is before you. And the Lord says, not yet. And the Lord says, not yet. You have not arrived where I need you to be. And so instead of him removing the cup, instead of him removing the thorn, instead of him removing penina, instead of all of those things, instead of removing the hardship, he turns the fire 
even up. He turns the fire even up. Oh my God. It's like I hear someone saying the Lord shall indeed deliver me. But you turn your prayer when the afflictions come and you say, but Lord, when? When is this going to end? How can I be embarrassed? How can I be embarrassed while I preach your gospel? How can I be embarrassed as a believer, full of faith, tongue speaking? How can I be embarrassed like this? When other women have children, I have nothing. Yet I have preserved myself. Yet I have entered in this marriage in purity. Lord! When is this going to end? Child of God, the prayer needs to change. Lest you miss your season of glorification. The prayer strategy needs to end. You need to go into a total different dimension of prayer. Where you are no longer praying words. You get lost in the spirit. Wherein you have prepared the scriptures. You have followed scriptures through. But none of the scriptures have removed the mountain before you. And you started to grow. And you started to wail. And you start to travail. Hardships, they carry a purpose to draw you deeper into the secret place of the Most High God. They draw you deeper to increase your faith. They grow you deeper so that you reign in authority. They draw you deeper so that you receive the mantle of prayer, wherein you are no longer praying, but you are speaking things into the spirit. You are speaking things into manifestation. There is a purpose. Job says to his wife, are we only to bless the Lord when all is well? Can't we bless him even in our sufferings? Can't we bless him even in our hardships? Job's wife says, curse your God and die. Sarah sur surrendered her faith. Job's wife surrendered her faith. I declare upon your life, you will never surrender your faith. You will never surrender your identity. You will hold on to these two things. Because it is these two things that God will facilitate your deliverance. That God will facilitate your breakthrough. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. When Job responds to his wife, he says, you are speaking like one of the foolish women. Meaning at some point she, as she was a wise woman. At some point she was a woman of revelation. At some point she was in tune with the spirit of God. But because of sufferings, she left the partnership of the Holy Spirit. She said, I cannot take this anymore. It is too much. It is too much. I cannot, I cannot, I can't take it anymore that I see my husband suffering like this. And she says, you know what, my husband? I'm enough of you scraping yourself. I am enough of you sitting by the ashes. But what she missed in that sitting of the ashes, because we know that ashes, they are a medicine to wounds. What she missed in that sitting of the, in the ashes was the, was the process of healing that was taking place. And she finds him sitting by the ashes. And because she had lost her revelation, because she had lost her identity, because she had lost her faith, she says, cast your God and die. 
the ashes, they symbolize a season of healing. They symbolize a season of deliverance. They symbolize a season of restoration. And so Job knew, he understood the season that he was in. And he says, my Redeemer lives in the circumstances of his life. He says, my Redeemer lives. Even though I go through hardships, even though I go through sufferings, even though I have been waiting, even though I see the destinies of my children finished, even though I see that the Lord is answering my prayer, Job declares, my Redeemer lives, even though he does not answer my prayer. Even though he's not coming now, my Redeemer lives. My Redeemer lives. Even though he's not removing the thorn in the flesh, my Redeemer lives. Even though he is slow to answer my prayer, to heal my marriage, to heal my business, to heal the destinies of my children. Even though he is slow to perform the vision that he has given to me. My Redeemer lives. I no longer know what to pray for. I no longer know what to pray for. Oh, but the Holy Spirit shall give me an utterance. He will give me an utterance. I will start to speak in other tongues that I have never heard before myself speaking. Why? Because I am no longer in the earthly realm. I am in another realm. And the Holy Spirit has lifted me up. And he's taking my utterance before God in a language that he can understand. It is only when we get to that position, when prayer partners have been removed, Hey, when the prayer partners have been removed, when the wives of Job's have been removed, when the friends of Job have been removed, when the penina has been removed, that God steps in and he opens the womb, that God steps in with our restoration because we have been holding on. Because we've been holding on. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Here's the word of the Lord in Hebrews 5, Hebrews 5, Hebrews 5, verses 7 and 8. Hallelujah. But I'm just going to read verse 8. Hallelujah. Though he was a son, oh my God. Hey! Hey! Though he was a son, yet he learned obedience. My God. Though he was a son, yet he learned obedience by the things which he suffered. This is Jesus Christ. Though the Lord was declared... Though the heavens had opened and he God opened and he spoke and he said, this is my beloved sign when he was baptized. The scripture records that the heavens opened, the clouds opened and God spoke and he declared that Jesus was his son. He said, listen to this one. The word of God says, though he was his son. He was not spared from hardships. He was not spared from hardships. My God. He was not spared from hardships. We carry the DNA of Christ. As he is, so are we. If he went through the sufferings, if he went through the hardships, we shall go through it and we shall gain victory because victory is already given unto us. And so whatever we are suffering, whatever we are going through, whatever we are going through, oh my God, deliverance has already happened. Victory has already been given unto us. 
and having been perfected, he became the author of eternal salvation to all who obey him. If he did not go through the suffering, if when the father was silent, when he asked for the cup to be removed, if he removed the cup himself, we would have been dodged of redemption. We would have been dodged of redemption. Hallelujah. We would have been dodged of redemption. My God, my God, that suffering that you are going through, that hardship you are going through, that situation that doesn't seem to be moving that you are going through. I'm telling you, there are nations, there are generations that are attached to your destiny. You can't afford to drop the ball. You can't. You can't. You cannot afford because there will be a child in your generation that will have to take the baton that you can drop right now. And so your generation, instead of moving forward, they will have to reverse to catch up with what you missed. Jesus endured. And when he endured in the mountain of Gethsemane, the scripture records that even though God did not answer that prayer, even though he did not deliver, even though he did not remove the cup, he allowed the hardship. Even though he did not come, oh God, he sent an angel to strengthen him. He sent an angel to strengthen him. And so when your knees are feeble, when your hands are tired, when you no longer know what to pray for, the Lord will dispatch his angels to put charge over you, to accompany you, to charge you up in the spirit. Because all that he wants you to do is to focus, is to focus on where he is taking you. Do not focus on the hardship. Do not focus on the cup. Do not focus on the thorn. Do not focus on Penina. Focus on God who will bring the deliverance, who will bring the restoration, who will bring the fruit of your womb, who will amp up your faith. Focus on God. He is your solution provider. Focus on God and not the affliction that you are being given by the enemy. Focus on God. I will tell you why. Hey, I will tell you why. When you focus on God, God is hitting his chest. God is giving a testimony about you. God is telling the enemy, go ahead. Go ahead and pursue him. Go ahead and pursue him. But I can rest assure you, Job is my righteous servant. Go ahead and pursue Staron. Go ahead and pursue Dibuyila. Go ahead and pursue Lefit. Go ahead and pursue them. But I am declaring he is and she is my Russia servant. It means God knows what he has built you up with. He knows before the enemy that I don't care what you are taking them. I have gleaded that person up with faith. I have gleaded that person up with identity. I have gleaded that person up with the blood of Jesus. I have gleaded her up with tongues of fire. And so when, the, when God allows the enemy to afflict you, he is testifying before the enemy. Child of God, you cannot allow God to be a embarrassed. You cannot allow God to be embarrassed. You cannot allow your destiny to be aborted. You cannot allow your generation to reverse. Carry on the baton and take it forth. The Lord shall deliver you. The crown is already coming. The crown has already been prepared. The crown has already been fitted. You only need to focus. You only need to focus on God and not the hardship. And God and not the suffering. The crown has been prepared.
prepared. The crown has been prepared. The crown has been prepared. It was prepared before the hardship strike. Because God testified about you. He said, my purposes shall never be thwarted. Go ahead, but do not touch her spirit. Because I need the spirit to aid her up, to aid him up. Go ahead and do what you need to do. Go ahead and afflict her, but do not touch her spirit. Why? Because the spirit belongs to God. Not even the enemy can tamper with the spirit of God. How do I know as I'm closing my message? How do I know that it is God who has brought this hardship in my life? How do I know that it is God who is, has orchestrated this suffering? How do I know that he is part of this suffering? You will know because you will take three days fast dry you are not eating anything you are not drinking anything hallelujah you are fasting and the answer does not come then you know God is involved how do I know it is God that is involved that when you reach day number three you can feel the spirit carrying you up to day number four when you think Lord I, I cannot do this anymore you wake up on the day that you want to close your fast and the spirit of the Lord says we are marching to day number five you do day number six you do day number seven and the Lord only when the Lord has tested you enough he releases the breakthrough you have prayed you have fasted you have done all things and you said Lord I no longer know what to pray for Lord I've cried all the tears I no longer have a prayer partner how do I know that it is you? Because people will leave you in that situation. People will get tired of your story. People will get tired of your suffering. People will question you. What have you done to God that he afflicts you like this? That is how you know that God is involved. He separates you. He separates you. He becomes jealous about you. He wants you to himself. Oh, hallelujah. He wants no disturbance. He wants nothing that will shift your focus from him. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your word, oh God. We appreciate you, Father. We thank you for your word. We have learned, oh God, that it is not every terrible circumstance that it is an attack. Not every terrible circumstances of our lives symbolize attack. Some of these circumstances, they symbolize your presence. They symbolize our promotion. They symbolize your faith towards us. They symbolize your testimony towards us. They symbolize your confidence about us. Jesus prayed for us. Father, I do not pray that you take them away from the world. I do not pray that you take them away. But I pray, Father, that you keep them. Our Savior, our Redeemer, we thank you that you prayed for us. That even though Peter was requested by the enemy to be sifted, 
you rose as an intercessor for him. We thank you that you have partnered with us in prayer. That though the enemy comes like a flood, you will lift up your spirit against the enemy so that we can soar and focus on our assignments and focus on the vision and focus on God. Father, we thank you that your plans are perfect. That the plans, the thoughts that you have towards us are not, are not thoughts to harm us, but they are thoughts to bring us into a good future. My God, I will not miss my future. And every believer that is under the sound of my voice, I declare, I decree, you will not miss your future. In the name of Jesus, you will not miss your days of glory. In the name of Jesus, you will not miss your day of breaking forth. You will not miss your days of healing. You will not miss your days of restoration. In the mighty name of Jesus, this season will pass. These hardships will pass. And the Lord shall crown you. The Lord shall crown you. In Jesus' mighty name. Father, strengthen those whose knees are feeble. Even if they lie prostrate before you, it is well. Strengthen those whose arms are tired, oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus, out of every brokenness, I declare a beautiful mosaic wired by testimonies that will build the future believers. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I thank you. I glorify your name, oh God. You are worthy of our praise. We worship you, God, in Jesus' mighty name. God bless you. I declare over your life a shalom peace of God. May God anchor this message in you. And may you never...